Hello everyone, it's Retroid Mini Day. Let's take a look at what we've got. Inside the box we have standard phone packaging, a protective bag, manual USB-C to A cable, and the Pocket Mini itself. This is what I call the Heathcliff version of the Retroid Pocket Mini due to a production error where they accidentally used a black glass instead of the standard white glass. All of the buttons and sticks feel good. The ergonomic bump outs help with the comfort in the hand. Let's turn on the device and go through the initial setup experience provided by Retroid. Keep in mind that some parts of this may be subject to change since Retroid is working on a new version of its Retroid launcher and intends to release an update to the operating system, moving it up to Android 13. The first steps in the launcher will be to set your language and then to connect to the internet. Once you are done connecting to Wi-Fi in the settings app, you'll select your time zone. Press the back button on the device to return to the setup wizard. Select if you want services from Google, and next is to pre-install apps. This is handy for people who are new to the space to get apps directly from the launcher, but these may not be the best version of the apps, and the newest versions may be available online or from the Google Play Store. In the future, we may do a more comprehensive setup guide with apps from the internet, but for now, let's concentrate on the out-of-box experience. The apps will take just a few moments to install. Next is to select if you want the device to start with a Retroid launcher or an Android phone-like experience. Since we are trying out Retroid's preferred out-of-box experience, we are going to go with the Retroid launcher today. More options for launchers are available online, like Jigisho or ESDE. The blank screen means you have no game set up. Next, I recommend to add your game backups to a micro SD card, which the device has a port for on the bottom. Insert the blank card into the device so Android will create the default blank directories. One thing to note is that reviewers with pre-production units had issues with the flap not sitting flush with the bottom of the device when an SD card is installed. That does not appear to be an issue with this retail unit. There is a few more small steps before we add our game backups, which is to select the consoles we want to emulate. These will appear in Retroid Launcher's main menu. Next is to select the option to create the ROM folders on the SD card. Once that is done, move the card to the PC and look for a folder called Retroid Pocket Games where you will add games and BIOS. Now that the games are loaded, it's time to configure the emulators. I hope this is something that the new launcher is better at since the menu options in the launcher do not appear to work and the apps need to be launched separately to allow access to the directories with the games. The next step is to launch RetroArch and grant it access to storage. Note that at this time there are no core files downloaded so it cannot emulate any systems just yet. When we go back to the Retroid launcher and run that same Retroid setup command again, it appears to succeed, but it still does not download any cores for us. You can run the same set of commands for the standalone launchers in the Retroid launcher as well, but I found that you still need to open up the app separately and grant it access to storage. Next, let's jump into a game collection and notice that it is empty. This is not a great experience and I hope it is improved in the new launcher. The next step is to press the ROMs button in the bottom left corner and add a directory with the games. You don't need to use the Retroid Launcher's default directories, but it does make it a little bit easier since it's a one-click option to automatically populate the path. We're not quite ready to play games yet. When attempting to launch a game, it will show an error instructing you to download a specific RetroArch core that the launcher expects. Pressing the Auto button does not automate downloading the core from RetroArch. It still must be downloaded manually from the RetroArch app. Go to the Online Updater and then select Core Downloader. The error message from the launcher tells us to get the VBA Next Core from RetroArch, but this message is small and very confusing. The list of RetroArch cores is also long and very confusing to newcomers. It is possible to change the launcher to a core that you prefer, but you'd have to edit the list directly and one typo could mean that your core does not work. With the right core downloader, we are now ready to get into game. Notice that when you launch the game, an on-screen overlay will appear for just a second until you press your first button, and then it will be dismissed. That concludes our setup of the default Retroid Launcher experience. Please leave a comment if you'd like to see a more advanced experience. 
In the meantime, stay retro, stay gaming, stay awesome.